to you know get uh, get to the meat of things. Um, ben Roth came with BT Professional Services. Uh, here's my book. I'm a veteran O'Reilly webinarist. Um, gave a uh, um, talk last year. Less uh, had you know less uh, less audio issues, but um, you could uh, you can listen to it at that point. Um, so we're going to talk about the business case. You know, why do does media why, why does media and data need to be sanitized? Uh, what can you do? Do you do it yourself? Do you outsource? Uh, there's a lot of uh, good references out there. Uh, leave some time for Q&A. And if you want to uh, tweet about this, uh, you can use uh, the Twitter hashtag of uh, Rothkey, uh, Rothkey Webinar. So you know, what is the business case? You know, why do you, uh, you know, do you need to have media sanitization? Media sanitization? So every organization has huge amounts of data. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing terabytes, we're seeing petabytes that needs to be sanitized. This is one area within information security that is often overlooked, uh, and failure to do this can have significant consequences, financial loss, you know, damage to reputation, you know, et cetera. Um, therefore, you know, digital media must be sanitized before disposable, disposal or redeployment, and that's what we're going to be talking about during uh, the, the next hour or so. Um, so when you get down to the bits and bytes level, you know the micron level, you know the nanometer level of the of the uh, of the data, it is uh, it's quite scary. You know what's going on is is wild stuff at the electronics level, and for a lot of people, when things get scary, they'll use garlic, uh, they'll use steaks, uh, they'll look for a silver bullet. But you don't need all of that. Not only do you not need it, it, it simply won't work when you want to deal with data destruction. Uh, and sanitization, what you need is a formal process, and that's what we're going to talk about, and that is something uh, that works. Um, old data is big news. I mean, I could, you know, fill, you know, 50 screens of old news stories where organizations didn't have these pro processes uh, and were, and suffered because of it. You know, companies, you know, states in the United States sell hard drives, sell media uh, without proper sanitization and you know, huge amounts of data um, is easily accessible uh, to those who, who buy that. As you can see, you know, here's headlines from a few years ago, recent headlines, and these are, these are significant issues. When you have hard drives going out to the public and they're not sanitized, there's a huge amount of data that becomes available. This um, started hitting the scene again uh, about two months ago when CBS did an expose on copier machines. Uh, how they were being resold without the hard drives uh, where a lot of the copied data uh, was not appropriately sanitized. Um, it, it got a significant amount of, pre significant amount of press. Uh, the FTC got involved. Uh, senators got involved. Um, and they're looking to, uh, to start an investigation. You know, how, you know, how could these things suddenly happen? You know, why is this happening you know, all of a sudden? Um, the reality is this is not an all-of-a-sudden thing. Uh, this is a, uh, a seminal paper that came out in 2003 um, by Simpson Garfinkel. Um, and in 2003, uh, Simpson and his researcher you know, went on eBay and bought a lot of hard drives and uh, found no one was sanitizing these drives. You know, far too many of them were being sold as is uh, with, without the data sanitized. This, this study is available online. I've got a link at the end. And so um, you know, this, this has been known in the industry for many, many years. This was a popular paper in 2003, so this is not a, this is not a, a new issue. Um, and you know, printers and copiers, it is not that difficult uh, to effectively purge that information. Here's a security checklist that HP you know, has been sending out for years. Um, here's a, they have a secure erase feature for their imagers, for their printers, all their devices. The key is... Organizations need to understand it. They need to use it. Uh, this checklist is maybe five, six pages, and if organizations would have done that to their printers, uh, with their multifunction printers, with their Xerox machines, they wouldn't have had those embarrassing situations where you know someone was buying them and seeing all these police records. So you know what is driving a lot of these? So there's there's a lot of standards, a lot of regulations out there that require appropriate media sanitization from HIPAA, PCI, et cetera. I don't have to read every one. This is just a, um, a small list of the many standards and regulations. Uh, if nothing else, it should be made a part of you know, every contract and its, it's best practices. Um, 
you know, so why do we need it? Um, even though Murphy's Law is such that, you know, when you want your data, you can't recover it, uh, the reality is is that data is, you know, remarkably uh, resilient. Uh, here's a, a fire. You know, uh, the, the physical computer itself was, you know, unrecoverable, destroyed, but the data was recovered from that hard drive. Uh, run over by a bus, data is still accessible. You know, soaked in a uh, soaked in a pond, two days, uh, all the data was recover, uh, recovered. Uh, you know, perhaps the uh, the saddest story of it all was that the hard drive from the space shuttle uh, Columbia was actually recovered. It fell from space, uh, and nonetheless, 99% uh, of the 400 meg uh, were recovered. And in fact, it was crucial uh, in. Uh, uh, that this data was crucial in the investigative process. So, so with that, you know, it is resilient. So, an organization needs to have a formal process in which to effectively get rid of that of that data. And what do we call that? Often it's called data destruction. Uh, the nomenclature, and we'll talk about why, is called data sanitization. Uh, data lives. Data data dies. You see this entire life cycle here, from discovery, classification. And a formal, comprehensive life cycle needs all of these. Auditing is pervasive through it, but from discovery, creation, protection, uh, and when that data goes away, it needs to be appropriately sanitized. Um, you know, when do you need to do this? There's, uh, you know, five bullet items here. We could easily create uh, 50 or so, but you should be able to get the message. Whenever uh, the media is sold, it's donated, you get rid of it. Uh, if you've got a laptop, any desktop, uh, which is end of lease, you're going to be sending that data back uh, to the manufacturer. Often, you know, employees will buy laptops. Data needs to be sanitized. Uh, if you're sending it back to uh, for repair, um, think about uh, sanitization there. If you've been completely hacked, you want to uh, have a new image from start, sanitization, and also uh, an overlooked area is in a raid or a hot spare. Um, it's put into service, then you'll take that uh, hard, th that drive out, at that point, you may want to, or you should, sanitize it as well as the original failed drive if it is still operational. Um, you know, hard drives are, are, are everywhere. Um, the numbers are that 500 million hard drives were sold in 2009. You know, that's a huge amount of hard drives out there. Um, those are the numbers sold. There's still billions out there. Um, and that's just hard drive. You know, the media where data is stored uh, is significant. Uh, these are not PEZ dispensers on the right. They're actually um, you know, USB drives uh, for Star Trek fans. Uh, and given the fact that, you know, four gigabyte USB drives are, are now given away at conferences for free rather than the expense of printing out data uh, on hard copies, it's better for the environment and uh, cheaper for a lot of organizations to just give attendees uh, a USB and let them view that at their leisure. So there's, you know, the number, the, the data amount, four gigabytes, you know, not that long ago was an, was an ungodly number. And now we're giving out uh, that that amount of data uh, for free, so it's significant. Um, if you get anything from this webinar, it's it's that sanitization needs to be formalized. Um, it, it can't be done haphazardly. And if you could see, you know, here's a guy in, the, in his parking lot uh, taking a sledgehammer, you know, having a good time, getting out some aggression, and destroying, you know, those hard drives. Um, you know, it's it's a nice way to do it. Is that a formal process? You know, I don't think so. If you had uh, data disclosure issues, you know, the legal counsel, the prosecutors wouldn't be too happy uh, if your process was that, you know, Joe uh, in the parking lot, you know, took a beer and some goggles and started breaking hard drives. Um, you know, so with that, how do you create a formal process? You know, it's based on, you know, the risk factors, you know, to your organization. You know, what type of data is it? And this will map back to that classification uh, matrix. Uh, classification is part of the data life cycle. Policy has to be created, has to be implemented, uh, extensive, explicit, auditable, you know, audited. And all those core issues, which we talk about, about information security policies and processes, you know, that needs to be built in around information sanitization. Uh, it needs to be done on a scheduled basis. Um, and in the event of a failure, when things do go south, uh, a plaintiff lawyer, you want to give them as little ammo to use uh, as possible. And if you can show that you've got a formalized process, it's audited, uh, there's quality control built into that. Uh, at the end of the day, the jury will likely have uh, a more favorable view of things, you know, if as opposed to if it was, you know, Joe in the in the back um, who takes a sledgehammer, you know, every other Tuesday. 
uh, except during March Madness. Um, so when we talk about policy, um, th there's a lot of factors involved. It's important, you know, one policy doesn't fit all. And one of the mistakes I found a lot of organizations make is that they will use policy templates out there. And there's um, huge amounts of policies out there which they can't use and, and cut and paste and say, hey, here's our policy. But, you know, that doesn't work uh, at a macro level and it certainly won't work around media sanitization. You have to look at a lot of factors. You know, what is the type of storage technology? How is it classified? You know, what is the environment in which it was used? Um, the pol policy has to be responsible. It has to look at all the hardware, all the various classifications, uh, in-house, uh, are you uh, outsourcing it, et cetera. Um, and, and with that, it's in, in, important to build in the concept of a sanitization moratorium uh, in in legal circles, this is known as a litigation hold or a legal hold, uh, and, and that's the point where an organization by, by law has to stop any shredding, any data sanitization, uh, has to stop immediately until legal counsel gives the okay uh, that you can you know, go forward and start again. Uh, there's a lot of reasons a legal hold would be put in place, you know, from subpoenas, regulatory issues, um, you know, um, federal agencies may come get involved. Um, so if an organization doesn't have a sanitization moratorium built into their process, they can uh, accidentally destroy data, destroy media, and that can be seen at, at a worst-case scenario as a uh, obstruction of justice issue. And uh, the U.S. Department of Justice in the last few years is taking uh, white-collar crime extremely seriously in our post-Enron era, um, what, what used to be a slap on the wrist now, we're seeing people get, you know, 20, 30, 40 years in federal prison. So if there is a, uh, a legal hold put in place, certainly you want to make sure everyone understands that and know that everything has to come to a, to a screeching halt. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, half a billion hard drives being you know, sold every year. Um, but the form factors we have to think about uh, in regards to data destruction, you know, are all of these and more from USBs, optical, you know, VHS, you know, there's a lot of floppies around, even though Dell hasn't been selling floppies uh, with their computers for a number of years. You know, there's billions of floppies out there. Uh, smartphones, the USBs that are, uh, are given away at conferences, uh, flash, solid state, multifunction printers. So there's a lot of different form factors out there. And uh, a lot of organizations think just hard drives when they think about media sanitization, uh, but it's really any media out there, understanding you know, what is your organization using? Are you using a lot of solid state? Are you still using floppies? Are you giving out USBs? Are you giving external USB drives, you know, backup tapes? You know, all of those need you know, to be put into your process. And uh, I think an important point is that you know, sell it, selling uh, is not sanitization. And if you've got backup tapes, uh, you've likely gotten emails from organizations, you know, wanting to buy your tape, wanting to, you know, buy used media. There's a n n number of them out there that will, you know, buy used tape and buy it for a few dollars each. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I think it's, you know, far too risky, you know, to sell that. Uh, selling is not a sanitization technique. Um, it's, it, it's not worth the few dollars that an organization is going to get by selling the, uh, the tapes. You know, you sell 100 tapes for maybe, you know, $300. Uh, you know, if, if you have a problem, that's, you know, one hour uh, of a lawyer's fee. And uh, when, when you've got these issues, uh, lawyers never charge, you know, one hour. We're talking, you know, hundreds and thousands of hours. Uh, so if you've got media, create a, a formal data sanitization process of which, you know, selling really, you know, shouldn't be part of that. Um, so the, the title of this webinar is Data Destruction. Uh, so the question is, you know, why have I been using the term data sanitization? So really the main document uh, around around this is NIST Special Publication 888, known as the Guidelines for Media Sanitization. This is from NIST. It's a free document. Uh, I've got a link at the end to the NIST website. Um, so NIST defines sanitization as a general process for removing data from storage media so that there's a reasonable assurance. Uh, keyword is reasonable here. Reasonable that the data may not be easily retrieved and reconstructed. Uh, it assists with the decision making when when you reuse it, when you dispose it. Um, you want to use it 
in parallel with your local policies, your procedures uh, to create a formalized risk-based decision on how are you going to sanitize, how are you going to dispose you know, of that media. Uh, this came out a few years ago. It's, um, um, it, it is the backbone of a lot of organizations' uh, processes around media sanitization. But the reason we don't really use data destruction is because data does not have to be dis necessarily destroyed, uh, as we'll see. So 888 has three main methods of sanitizing data, clearing, purging, and destroying. Uh, so clearing is, uh, is, is getting rid of the data such that it's resilient against a keyboard attack. Uh, purging, and we'll talk about these details in, in, in a few slides. Purging, uh, doing it against a laboratory attack, uh, like a secure erasure or a degausser. And finally, destroying is the absolute destruction when you're sent through, uh, send it through a shredder, you smelt it, you disintegrate. Um, so you can clear data from a hard drive and reuse it again. Um, if you destroy it, you know, if you send that hard drive through a shredder, there's no way to get it back. So that's why NIST uses the term sanitization, because you don't always have to destroy it uh, to get that data off of the media. Um, th there's a number of good ways uh, to sanitize, and there's a number of ways, you know, not to do it. Uh, here's a few of them. File deletion. You know, Peter, Peter Norton became a, uh, a very wealthy man uh, in the early days uh, of the PCs by creating a utility to, to undelete files. And while most people who are technically savvy know that when you delete a file, you're not really deleting it. Um, the operating system is just uh, removing it from the uh, allocation table. Um, so when you delete it, it's still there, easily recoverable. Uh, when you format a hard drive, data is still recoverable. When um, a disk is repartitioned, the media is not is not sanitized. And the key word, the key word here is sanitization. And, and finally, encryption de key destruction. That is not a an appropriate method of sanitization for uh, you know for a lot of reasons. One is that um, strong encryption today is weak encryption tomorrow. Uh, so if that's encrypted, maybe it's unbreakable today. In, in 10 years, with uh, various technologies, various increases in uh, CPU power, that will be available, that, that, uh, that media, those files can be easily you know, decrypted. So while encryption will make the data unavailable, it's certainly not an acceptable method uh, for media sanitization. Um, and so let's get into some of, some of the nitty-gritty here. There's a lot of uh, numerous ways which you can sanitize data, uh, hardware, software, do-it-yourself, you know, outsources, outsource it. You know, what is the best way? You know, people always ask, you know, what is the best way to do X? You know, what is the best way? You know, what is the best firewall? What's the best IDS, et cetera? Uh, and the answer to every information security question is, you know, it depends. It depends on your needs, you know, your in-house staff, the nature of the data, the nature of the media. Um, so all you can do is, is take these advantages and disadvantage, dis, dis, advantages and disadvantages, map it back to your environment, and make your own decision. So when things are, you know, software-based, um, a single path generally is is adequate. It can be, you know, cost-effective. Um, the good thing in of some software solutions, you could clear just specific data files, partitions, or just the free space. Uh, it's a green solution. You can sanitize a hard drive and put it back into service. Uh, the downside is it, it takes longer. You know, on, on larger drives, it could take hours in some cases. Um, in, in a lot of drives, there's inaccessible regions. Um, as I said earlier, there's a lot of you know, weird things going on on hard drives. And when you get into um, um, these inaccessible regions, you know, data may be stored there. Um, there's no protection during the process. Um, often, if you're buying, depending on the software utility, you may need a separate license for every hard drive. Uh, it won't work well if you don't have QA processes in place. Um, you know, one thing, it's not as scalable. If you want to actually shred hard drives, you can shred 100 drives, uh, you know, in, in a few minutes. If you want to start doing this uh, at a software level, uh, it can take some hours. It could take much longer. Um, which is the best way? It depends on your needs, on your budgets, on your requirements. And like everything else, Pluses and minuses to each, you know, to each scenario. Um, one of the, you know, 
most you know, contentious issues uh, in the sanitization space is, you know, how many passes do you need? And when you get, uh, when you, you, you speak to people who are, who are passionate about this, uh, they can't get quite emotional. Do you need a single pass or do you need a multiple pass? Um, one of the early papers was by Peter Gutman, came out in 1996, uh, where he talked about data remnants. At the time, he recommended, you know, multiple passes. Uh, the DOD standard 522i.22m, uh, at the time, it required, you know, three passes. Um, that is the, uh, by NIST 808.88, uh, which is our, uh, um, w what the industry is using um, around media sanitation. Uh, and they're saying for, for most disks manufactured after 2001, you know, a single pass is adequate uh, if it's able to access the entire data storage region of the media surface. Uh, maybe a little hard to read here, uh, PGP desktop has the utility to wipe uh, the media. Their default is uh, three passes. Um, at the end of the day, you know, by and large, a single pass is adequate. But once again, it depends, you know, who, who are your adversaries? You know, what is the media uh, on that hard You know, what is, you know, on that media? If it's, you know, if you're, you know, Joe Citizen and it's your taxes, uh, and your you know, your life's work and all your documentation there, you know, one pass is enough. If someone gets that, perhaps they can recover that data. Uh, but to do that is, you know, quite expensive, you know, qu takes a ex significant amount of hardware, of software, and, and ultimately it takes a lot of time. So if someone wants to spend, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, hundreds of hours, you know, at, trying to retrieve, you know, your My Documents folder. Are they really going to do that, or are they going to move on to someone else? Um, the NSA, the CIA, probably the, uh, you know, the folks from Russia uh, who were arrested yesterday, my guess is, you know, they might have done, you know, multiple passes uh, on their media. But for the most part, you know, in 2010, a single pass is enough. But as I said, if you, uh, if, if you start getting to people who are media uh, sanitization purists, this is clearly... Uh, an emotional issue, uh, and, uh, you know, make sure, uh, you know, they're drinking their beer from a, a paper cup, not a, a glass cup, because they may throw it at you. But from a business perspective, as I said, you know, by and large, you know, one pass is enough. Um, so with that, you know, there's a lot of avenues out there to remove data. Uh, and one utility which has been around for a number of years is uh, the Secure Erase. Uh, functionality, and that's built in, been built in by hard drive manufacturers uh, for a number of years. It's been in most drives uh, since 2001. Uh, it's relatively easy. Uh, it will uh, get rid of all of the media uh, on that uh, on that hard drive, such that it meets 800.88 requirements. So the question is, you know, if it's there, you know, why aren't people doing it? Um, the reality is, is that. It's inhibited by a lot of the PC manufacturers for various reasons. One is they don't want grandma to accidentally, you know, wipe her hard drive uh, and then call the help desk, you know, yelling that, uh, you know, I pressed F6 and now I can't, you know, get all of my data. Um, they also want it such that uh, malware can't access it um, to launch an attack, you know, to wipe all of that data out there. Uh, we'll talk about some hardware solutions they are using uh, the secure erase functionality, but it is out there in a lot of hard drives. But as I said, is uh, it's um, it, it's often hard to read about in the documentation because the manufacturers, at the end of the day, they really don't want you to know about it because it is uh, it's done incorrectly. And on, on a lot of end users, when they see secure erase, they may think, "Hey, I'm just able to erase a subset of files like PGPY." But no, secure erase is a is a one-way function. And it will get rid of you know all of the data uh, such that it's unrecoverable. Um, we, we talked about another method um, used that is called degaussing, and degaussing uses uh, magnetic fields to you know to to wipe out all of the bits and bytes you know, on that hard drive. Um, if you're going to think about degaussing, make sure your device is on the NSA's degausser evaluated products list. Um, if you want, this, pr this presentation will be available in a, in a day or so in PDF, and this is hyperlinked there. Uh, but if, uh, if you want it sooner, just Google that, and that will take you to the NSA website. It's a PDF file, and the NSA evaluates uh, in uh, significant detail 
uh, a lot of DeGosser or devices uh, to make sure it meets their requirements. Uh, it's important to understand if you're doing this on a hard drive, it is you know, irreversible. It's going to destroy the server controls on the device, uh, which will permanently make that, device, that hard drive uh, you know, unusable in the future. Once the servo is damaged, it's unusable. So this is good to use if you, are, if you want to you know, quickly get rid of all the data and then send it out to be shredded. Uh, but once again, if you plan to reuse the drive, certainly do not degauss it because that, that hard drive will be you know, unavailable uh, if you try to you know, use it again. You know, how do you choose a degausser? You know, there's a, uh, you're not going to find this in consumer reports, uh, these details, but there's cycle times. You know, how, many, uh, how many cycles do you need to run it through? If you're a busy shop, you're going to look for a device you know, that could uh, uh, do a lot of drives per hour. Uh, many of these, you know, generate significant heats that need to be cooled down, you know, so think about that. Uh, and if you look at these, you might not be able to tell it uh, through the picture, but, you know, these devices are uh, are quite big. Uh, they can be expensive. So do you want something handheld? Do you want something bigger? Um, smaller smaller units are handheld. They're somewhat portable, uh, but if they're larger, you know, they, they, some of these are 400 pounds made for industrial use, made for um, – Organizations where there's a skip, where there's highly confidential information. So if you're going to go in that arena, you know, make sure uh, you've got uh, the location for that. Uh, and ultimately, there's some environmental considerations you need to think about. Um, these uh, degaussers, especially the more powerful ones, uh, create extremely strong magnetic fields, uh, both from a from a practical perspective. You don't want people uh, with pacemakers. Um, you know, walking around there, you don't want anyone with sensitive electronic equipment, you know, close by, uh, because it, it can uh, it can wipe them out uh, if they happen to be in the in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and it, what do you do if you just want to get rid of that drive, you know, heart, you know, once and for all? It, that's what we call you know physical destruction, and destruction is one of these sanitation sanitization techniques uh, mentioned uh, in 800-88. Uh, and within physical destruction, there's there's different uh, methods of doing that. You know, absolute destruction, you know, shredding it, disintegration, you know, bending, breaking, mangling the hard drive. Um, so if you look on th that picture on the left, those those drives are mangled, and there, there's a device that will uh, you know punch down on the drive, you know, break the platters, uh, and make it you know completely unusable at that point. So that is an aspect of physical destruction. Often organizations will do that before they send it uh, out to be shredded. Uh, but at that point, the data isn't absolutely destroyed because the platters have been broken, the servos have been broken. But if someone, you know, would send that to OnTrack or any data recovery organization, uh, they would be able to get that data off of that. Um, if you need absolute destruction, you need to destroy the media uh, as small as possible. The, the common wisdom is at this point, uh, it should have a particle size of uh, no larger than one two hundred fiftieth of an inch. Um, once again, this gets back to you know what is your risk appetite, what is your risk matrix, what is on uh, that media. As I said, the defense agencies, uh, the witness protection program, pharmaceutical companies, you know those organizations that need absolute destruction, they will do that. Uh, pharmaceuticals, Boeing, Airbus military, et cetera. Uh, if you're a small mom and pop up operation, you know, you likely don't need uh, that aggressive amount uh, you know, to destroy it up to the 150th one, one of an inch level. Is it nice to do? Certainly. But once again, you need to know, you know what is reasonable at the end of the day. Um, another way to do that is uh, there's hardware which will enable secure erase command. Um, is, as I said earlier, a lot of manufacturers don't tell the uh, the end user how to use secure erase for various reasons. So there's you know hardware out there which you can hook up a, uh, a hard drive to it. Often you can daisy chain a number of hard drives. Uh, it will use a secure erase command uh, to wipe out all the information. A lot of organizations like to use that when they uh, retire a desktop, uh, but want to use the media again to uh, and that way you can wipe out everything and use it to quickly roll out a new operating system uh, to, multiple, um, uh, to multiple devices. So I think you could use secure rights at the individual level, at the desktop level, or you could use uh, various media out there to securely erase a number of devices simultaneously. Um, 
within sanitization, uh, optical media is one area the, the NSA has got involved. You know, optical, optical media, uh, there's a specific NSA directive, CSSO402, around optical media destruction. There's devices out there which will grind the information off that media layer. Um, so if you've got a lot of optical media uh, and you need to have that sanitized, you may want to take a look at 0402 and use a device such as those or find a vendor that will uh, securely sanitize your optical media. Um, and like a lot of you know, IS issues, it gets down to you know, do you in, do it yourself or do you do you outsource it? And um, to do it yourself versus outsource has you know pluses and minuses. Uh, when it comes to media, um, it's never going to leave you leave your location, so you don't have to worry about it being lost in transit. Uh, full control, you know, you're not giving it over to someone. Uh, it's done by your own trusted staff in your own facility. Um, you, know, you, you control everything. So that is a, a huge advantage. Uh, the disadvantage is that um, the hardware involved often can be expensive. Uh, depending on the volume for your organization, it may take significant time uh, until you see ROI on that. Um, if the staff isn't doing this a lot, they can often miss devices. Um, I'm not going to read every bullet item. Um, you know, techni as I said, technicians will often misdrive, and as part of this, you have to make sure you've got a good quality control process built in this to make sure it's completely uh, effective. As you can see, advantages, disadvantage to everything, um, and so you need to think: you know, do I want to do it myself, or uh, you know, outsource it? Um, it's important to reiterate: you know, quality control you know needs to be built into, into every process within uh, information security. And certainly in the media sanitization phase, um, you know, build that in. Make sure there's separation of duties. You know, one technician is going to remove the hard drive, and you're going to make sure you have another technician do the actual sanitization. Um, and even after you do all of that, you know, do quality control. You know, see if you can recover uh, that data. Um, degaussers work, uh, but you know, maybe you've got a bad degausser, and it really didn't work. If you're destroying a hard drive, you can see it. You know, you can see the drive there in a thousand pieces. So that quality control is relatively easy to ascertain. Uh, but if you're using a software-based solution, if you're using secure erase, if you're using any type of wiping, uh, you want to do QC because you, you, you may think the software is working, uh, but it's really not. So, you know, take those drives. Take roughly, you know, at least, you know, 10%. But once again, depending you know, on your organization and, and have your folks use the forensic tools to attempt to recover data uh, with those recovery tools. Uh, in a perfect world, they shouldn't be able to do it. Um, the world certainly isn't perfect. There's software errors, there's end user errors. Um, and if you start seeing a lot of these drives have significant amounts of data that is recoverable, uh, then clearly uh, the process is broken and you need to reevaluate your data sanitization process. Uh, with outsourcing uh, advantages and disadvantages, uh, for a lot of organizations, they think you know, outsourcing is, uh, is magic and they will have a poor process and they'll outsource it, and all they've simply done is outsource a, uh, a poor process. Um, so you want to make sure you, know, you have your requirements defined and then find a good vendor who can do that. Um, w with outsourcing, the adva main advantage generally within data destruction and a lot of other areas is that you have no initial capital investment if you want to build an infrastructure. Uh, for data sanitization, it can be quite expensive. Uh, you outsource it, you know, they've done it, they're ready from day one. Um, volume needs, you know, generally they will know the best practices. You don't have to manage the personnel. Um, you know, there's a lot of issues around how you dispose um, of, the, of the media. And um, as we're, we're turning to a more a greener society, uh, the EPA – is aggressively pursuing organizations that are not disposing of media appropriately. And if you uh, do that inappropriate, you could find yourself uh, on the other end of an EPA subpoena, which can be quite expensive. So hopefully, you know, if you've outsourced it, uh, the organizations are aware of that and have those controls in place uh, and are working with the EPA. Um, disadvantage uh, really is the exact opposite of those advantages of doing it yourself. You know, you lack control. That may be transported outside your location. Um, like with any outsourcing, there are uh, issues. Uh, you can get locked into a bad contract. Occasionally, you know, some vendors may require minimums uh, greater than your, your needs. 
Um, so you think about that. Look at the advantages. Look at the disadvantages. Uh, it's crucial to find a good vendor and at the end of the day see, you know, do you want to outsource it or you know, do you want to do it yourself? If you do outsource it, there's a lot of questions you want to ask a prospective outsource firm. Uh, I'm not going to bore you and read every question. Um, here's a subset. You should have a lot of questions here. Um, and you should ask all of these to the firm uh, and make sure they answer appropriate to your requirements. But at the end of the day, um, you know, ask a lot of questions. You know, don't just you know, sit through their marketing spiel, get impressed with them, and sign a contract. You know, ask a lot of questions and make sure they're meeting your requirements. And that way, once they do that, uh, you can make sure you've made, uh, made the right decision. Um, a, a caveat MTAR with, with outsourcing, at the end of the day, you know, they, many of them will give you a certificate of destruction saying this hard drive, serial number XXX, barcode, et cetera, was destroyed. Uh, but if they don't have good processes in place, if they lose the device, if the data is exposed, that pretty certificate of destruction you know, re means very little in the real world. Um, and the regulators, your clients, uh, they're going to come to you, not the outsource vendors. So it's important, you know, when you choose an outsource vendor for data sanitization, uh, put a lot of due diligence involved. Um, with that, you know, organizations start need to take data sanitization seriously. Um, segregation, inventory, isolation. Um, start segregating those drives. You know, know which media needs to be. Uh, sanitize, you know, get an inventory of the media out there. It's astounding how many organizations are clueless to, uh, to what hardware they own in the organization. There could be, there's hundreds of devices out there. A lot of organizations are just clueless about. So make sure you have a chain of custody, chain of possession, and know, know what is uh, in your organization. Start isolating those devices. Make sure they're in secure containers in secure areas. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is you don't want to start warehousing these areas uh, where people can know, hey, in the corner, um, in the back of the warehouse is where all the media is. You know, that's the last thing you want. Um, an important organization around data destruction is NAID, the National Association for Information Destruction. NAID started out as is, uh, is working with companies that did uh, shredding uh, of paper. Uh, but they've gotten in a, in a big way into, into the uh, media space. Um, they are creating, um, they have a certification program. Their, their goal is to promote information destruction industry, create standards and ethics for all its members' companies. Um, if you're dealing uh, with an outsource vendor, you most certainly want to make sure they're uh, NAID AAA certified. Um, it's an uh, independent, it's audited, um, and by and large, I've, uh, any organization that is not uh, NAID certified, you got to ask yourself, you know, why not? Um, if they're in process, uh, which many are, you know, understand, you know, when do they expect to be certified? Uh, but this is sort of the the good housekeeping good housekeeping seal in the sanitization business. Um, you know, this is uh, originally was going to be an hour. We had to try to leave the last ten minutes for Q and A. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there uh, around sanitization. Uh, as a start, get the NIST guide. It's free. Um, there's a lot of good information out there also. Uh, the UCF guide, Nade, Gartner has a document. Uh, ARMA has a document. These are not expensive documents. Um, uh, so if you're serious about this, th these are some things you definitely, you know, want to get your hands on. Um, I, I could list, you know, 50 slides uh, of vendors and solution providers, but there's a lot of uh, good information out there. There's a lot of good vendors. You know, some, some are... Um, you got to pay for others are free. Derek's boot and nuke, boot and nuke utility uh, is open source. You go to dban.org. It's free. Um, some organizations don't want to do that. Um, it's a uh, th there's you know, a lot of good information out there. Um, uh, Simpson Garfinkel's paper Rem Remembrance of Data Data Past classic paper. Um, there's a great paper available, Best Practices for the Destruction of Digital Data. You can go to chicadasecurity.com, get it there. Um, IBM has papers, Storage and Destruction Business Magazine uh, is available. So there's a lot of good information out there. Uh, if you really want to get down to the bits and bytes level, the Center for Magnetic Research Recording, um, University of California, San Diego, uh, is at the cutting edge uh, in the sanitization field. 
Um, and um, what they're doing there is astounding. Uh, the research is fascinating. Um, you know, Australian Department of Defense has a lot of good papers out there. Um, as I said, if you, it, it, it's a fascinating area. You can't keep yourself busy uh, for the next few weeks just reading all of the good data out there. Um, so you know, what are some action items you want to take at this point? You know, first off, management awareness. I said this issue has been around you know, for, for a long time. Peter Gutman's paper came out in 1996. Simpson Garfico's paper came out in 2003 where he was buying hard drives off eBay. Uh, so this is not new, but management you know, needs to be made aware of it. After awareness, then you develop a strategy. Look at your procedures. You know, are, are they adequate? Are they complete? Uh, you want to make sure, you know, failure analysis. Um, software will fail. The gossers will fail. Uh, so when that happens, you know, what, how are you going to deal with that? Um, information lifecycle audit program, you know, build that in to have that life cycle so that data sanitization is part of that. Um, and finally, you know, ensure quality control is built into the process. Just because you're degaussing you know, it doesn't necessarily, you know, ensure it's really working. There's numerous horror stories out there of organizations that, thought they were backing up their data. Uh, when they tried to restore it, they found the read-write heads on the uh, backup um, tape drive were not working. So how do you know your backup truly worked is when you can actually restore the data. Uh, how do you know your sanitization really worked is when you've got a QA process in place and you cannot you know, recover that data. Uh, you know, thanks for attending. If you want to reach out, I'm available uh, uh, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Uh, we got uh, started a little late here due to technical difficulties. Um, we've got about five minutes for Q&A, um, but uh, after that, um, I'm available. You can reach out to me via Twitter. Uh, here's my email address. And as I said, this presentation will be available uh, uh, on the O'Reilly website. Just look out for your email, and they uh, will tell you how to obtain that. Um, I appreciate your, uh, your attendance. Um, I think this is a a fascinating area. It's an overlooked area uh, in far too many organizations um, when it comes to information security. They'll have IDSs, you know, they'll have firewalls, they'll have secure ID tokens, uh, but when you talk, uh, you ask them, you know, what about data destruction, media sanitization? You know, they think, uh, you know, sanitization means, you know, well, you know, um, you know, taking a hard drive and, you know, dipping it in ivory soap. You know, that's clearly not it. Um, Thanks for attending, and uh, if we've got any Q&A, would be more than happy uh, to answer it for you. Hey, Ben, we have a couple questions. Okay. Um, thanks also for the great, great talk. You. Okay. I mean, if I say you sure know your stuff, I think that's okay. an understatement. Okay. So Sam is well, asking. I, I, I also know people who know their stuff also, so a few okay. of those people. Well, that and, always uh, helps. Yeah. Networking. So I think uh, Rick may have answered this, but Dan was asking, where can you find the NIST 888 document? Yeah, just Google NIST 800-88, and that should be the uh, the. Um, um, let me do that as we speak. Let me eat my own dog food. Yeah, Google no, NIST 800-88, and the first um, um, Google result uh, take you to uh, the NIST website. Um, csrc.nist.gov, it's there, um, and you download it. Oh, yeah, it. Larry just posted a link okay. to it. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. That's always you, you know, your tax dollars at work, it's a free document, and uh, while uh, the government often um, doesn't take the most pragmatic way of doing things, uh, as in you know, taking your shoes off at the airport, uh, NIST has a plethora of uh, invaluable, you know, um, advisory documents, and this is just one of them. So you definitely go to NIST, and you'll see this is a great document, and they've got a lot of good things out there. Okay. We have a couple questions. Brian is asking, when you or your customer's SQL Server database is hosted on a shared SQL Server, how can you be sure the database is correctly, dis correctly destroyed when it's no longer used? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it's uh, as I understand, I think uh, a, a lot of the vendors, uh, um, Oracle, Sybase, I mean, uh, ultimately I think everything is going to be Oracle if you give it enough time, uh, but they've got routines where you can uh, wipe um, that information being held um, in memory. Um, so they've got those utilities there. Um, I'm not up on the um, 
the database field, but you know, once it once it's at the tape level, once it's you know, once it's actually written to media, then you would put in, um, you, know, you would use those those software hardware utilities. Uh, but as I said, if you've got something a database, uh, a live database, then uh, you want to find some utility. Uh, the vendor should have a utility to you know, to wipe that data. Okay, and then um, Ephemios, excuse me if I mangled that name, uh, asks, some software suggests purging data using various bit patterns. Does this make a difference or not? Um, you know, once again, it's... Rick says not. <laughs> yeah. Um, as that is, you know, Rick, if Rick says not, then that's the answer. I mean, Rick, uh, for those that don't know... Um, uh, Rick Edelstein is is a guy I go to uh, for for the tough questions. Um, at the end of the day, it depends. You know, you know what is the data, but um, if someone's going to be attacking it with an electron microscope, you know those bit even those writ random bit patterns generally wouldn't you know make that big of a difference. Uh, but uh, you know, um, as I said, uh, it wouldn't make that much of a difference, and I don't see the ROI on that. Okay, and and then I think one more question. We have time for Sam's question, which is, do you have any recommended file sanitation software for OS X or Linux? Um, I thought DBAN. Uh, I thought there was. Uh, I thought DBAN had a um, um, uh, was ported to uh, to a few flavors of Linux and um, uh, OS X. You know, I don't. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, off the top of my head, um, I haven't uh, done much in the uh, the Apple space. Okay, I do know D-Ban. that uh, my iPod occasionally just you know gets corrupted. So if oh, you wait a long you know enough time on uh, an iPod, it'll uh, destroy itself. But uh, from, uh, but you know a, a good piece of software, I'm not sure of for the OS X. I'm sure once again, for a lot of these, you know, if you Google uh, you know Google it, you will find uh, some vendors out there. <laughs> Jason said. You, you guys can't see that. It's a feature, not a bug. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're out of time, and I just want to thank everyone for, first of all, helping us troubleshoot, and second of all, uh, all your great comments during the webcast. It was a I, – I really appreciate that. It, it makes for a very interesting webcast. And, Ben, thank you so much for doing this. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah, I said it's a – it's a um, – it's a um, – uh, it's, it's an interesting topic, um, and I think it's important uh, you know, that management knows about it. Okay. And I, I saw a couple of people asking if they could have a copy of your slide deck. I haven't uploaded it for people to download here, but uh, you, I think you told me it was all right to share it. So if they would like a copy, they can email me at webcast at O'Reilly.com, and I can send you a PDF of it. But we'll also have a recording of the entire presentation available, and you can watch in a couple different ways. So, oh, I'm always glad to fix the audio problems yeah. when possible. So thank you, Ephemia. Um, and thanks, everyone. That's okay, it. thank it was you. a good webcast. Thanks, yeah. Ben. So I'm going to um, thank you for joining us, everyone, and I'm going to close out the meeting now. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>